I've finally found the perfect drum machine. For me, at least. Freebeat. Hey, how's it going, everybody? Welcome to Freebeat. Before we begin, let me just say that this 1010 Razzmatazz was not sent to me by anyone. I bought it with my own money, and this video is not sponsored in any way. If you'd like to support the channel, head over to patreon.com slash freebeat. And speaking of Patreon, today's patron shoutout goes to Everett Vincent. Thank you so very much for the support. So, this is the 1010 Nanobox Razzmatazz. It is a dinky little pink box that costs 399 US dollars. Yep. <laughs> 400 bucks for this. And I paid that. And I don't regret it for a second. In fact, I think that this might be one of the best purchases that I've ever made on this channel. Before I do anything else, I'm going to give you a sound demo, and I'm going to tell you that all of the sounds you're about to hear come directly and exclusively from this little box. I'm controlling it with a Roland SPD-SX over MIDI, and the audio is technically going through a Roland SP-404, but there are no effects on that audio. Everything you hear is straight from the Razzmatazz. Let me explain. See, before I got into electronic music, I was a drummer. And being a drummer, I like to play the drums. However, since getting into electronic music, I've really fallen in love with synthesizers and what they can do. Specifically, drum synthesizers and what they can do and the sounds they can make. I've really appreciated how musical they can be, especially when things like uh, modulation are introduced. Also, I know this camera shot kind of sucks, but uh, I'm just trying something different, having some fun, switching it up. See, that's where this setup comes in. For the past few months, I've been developing a live show, uh, not to stream here on the channel, although I will be doing that this winter, and I'd love it if you could check it out, the live stream shows are completely free, but to take on the road and play in front of actual real-life people at real venues. <laughs> Scary, I know. Anyway, it's taken me a long time to realize this, but I've finally started to understand that people don't want to go to an electronic music show, see someone sit down at a drum kit, and press play on a backing track, and then just drum along to it, even if it's on an electric drum kit. They don't want that. No, if I'm going to play a live show, I actually need to perform my music. However, I refuse to give up actually playing the drums, because it's my favorite instrument, and it's what I do. And that is why I bought the Razzmatazz. And don't worry, I'll have a video going over the rest of this live setup very soon. Let's take a look at the outside of the Razzmatazz real quick here. We've got four buttons that are actually pretty satisfying to click. Then we have these two knobs and this thing is a touch screen. Then on the back here, we've got a micro SD card slot. Then we have line in and out, three and a half millimeter, uh, clock in, three and a half millimeter, MIDI in and out, three and a half millimeter. By the way, uh, MIDI in, it can accept both type A and type B, which is awesome. Uh, and then a USB type C port. Now that type C port is only for 
power. Not for audio, not for MIDI, just power. Well, that's kind of a bummer, it also uh, shines light on another bummer, and that's that the Razzmatazz uh, does not have a built-in battery. None of the nano boxes do. Um, just kind of a shame. Uh, you have to have it powered. You have to have it plugged in uh, to power it. Although apparently 1010 is working on some kind of battery system that works with these. I don't know. Bo mentioned it in his video about their new uh, nano box, the Tangerine. So what is this thing? Well, it is an eight voice polyphonic drum synthesizer. Ooh, you ready for this? Oh, yeah, nice. And each of those eight voices can be any combination of two different FM oscillators and a WAV file. And yes, you can import custom WAV files via the micro SD, or you can simply record them via the line in. From there, you have a variety of parameters to shape your sound. Each voice also has two filters, which can either be ran in series or parallel, two envelopes, and LFO, and then you also have a resonator, a snap generator, four different types of distortion, as well as bit crush and rate crush. Also, Roger Lin helped 1010 out with that distortion, which is pretty cool. Uh, let's see, you've also got uh, two send effects, uh, which are a reverb and a delay, which any of your drums can be sent to. And you can even send incoming audio through those effects as well. And that's actually a whole separate line in. Uh, it doesn't take up any of the uh, eight drum slots. Now, navigating the Rasmataz is actually pretty simple. And despite it looking difficult to use, everything is clearly labeled and the touchscreen is pretty accurate. I haven't had any miscues or anything like that that weren't obviously my fault. Also, as of the latest firmware update, 1010 has implemented a transporter feature. So you simply hold the home button and then this directory pops up here and it's got all of the available pages on it and you just click where you want to go. It's super easy. Each of your drums also have a macro screen where the knobs can adjust a variety of parameters on the fly, which is neat. It also has a sequencer called the Super Stepper, but I honestly have not really used it uh, because I've been basically exclusively playing it with the SPD-SX. It does look neat though, and I'm sure I'll check it out eventually. And that's it. Those are the basic features of the Razzmatazz. So right now you're probably thinking, really? Freebeat, you wasted your money. Uh, you wasted 400 bucks. Uh, you know, the TR Success from Roland is also $400. You've already got a Volca drum. Uh, you could just put your samples into the SPDSX and play them there. And I suppose you're right. However, there is one major reason that I purchased the Razzmatazz and why I've fallen in love with it. Modulation. Okay, two reasons, I guess. The second being that I was determined to keep the live rig small, and the Razzmatazz fills all of my needs and also fits in that tiny little space. Anyway, modulation. Most parameters in the Razzmatazz can be modulated, any of them that have these three boxes to the side here. They each also have three separate slots for sources, each with their own depth. Now, that's not three modulations per voice. That's three modulation slots per modulatable parameter per voice. That alone is pretty massive. You can get some ridiculously in-depth sounds going on. But let's talk about modulation sources. I mentioned it earlier, there are two envelopes per voice. Envelope one, envelope two. There's also an LFO per voice. Then we get to the external sources. There's mod wheel allowing you to modulate something with an external modulation wheel or mod strip. There's also pressure allowing you to use this with a, a controller that has aftertouch. And then finally, the big one, Velocity. You can map velocity to any modulatable parameter. Now, hopefully, you start to see where the power here lies. 
When you hit a real drum harder or softer, the volume isn't the only thing that changes. The sustain, the decay, the amount that it reverberates around you, and so much more all change too. That's what makes acoustic drums so hard to replicate with electronics. Now that's fine for me because I don't really want to replicate an acoustic drum, but I do want to apply that same concept to my electronic sounds. Here's a patch that I designed that has a snare drum with the level of each of its FM oscillators mapped to velocity, the level of its sample, in this case a Lin snare drum, also mapped to velocity, the decay of the envelope, also mapped to velocity, the amount of distortion, also mapped to velocity, and the cutoff of a low-pass filter, also mapped to velocity, but in a negative fashion. So the harder I hit the snare drum, the more low-pass filter applies, the more it goes down, rather than how you might expect where it starts low and comes up. Yes, the modulation amounts for velocity are bipolar. You can go down or up. That is why I didn't just use a TR6S or a Volca drum. That's why I don't want to just put some samples onto my SPDSX. Sure, I can trigger a sound repeatedly, but I can't play them. I can't be expressive like I want to be. And of course, beyond the modulation angle, there aren't a lot of pieces of gear out there that offer a blend of synthesis and samples. Even high-end pieces of gear like the Nord Drum 3P, which I went back and forth on for a very long time, by the way, can't do that. And the Nord Drum 3P costs almost three times as this, although it can modulate pitch, which the Razzmatazz cannot, which is kind of silly. There's only one piece of gear that, in my mind, actually comes close to what the Razzmatazz can do, and that's the Synthstrom Deluge. The Deluge is a beast, and it can do a lot, but because I really only need to hyper-focus in on these drum sounds, the Deluge is just too big and complicated for a use like this. No, the Razzmatazz really is the perfect drum machine for me here. It also sounds fantastic. I'm not someone who typically cares a lot or even really notices super high quality audio, but to my ears, this is one of the cleanest sounding outputs I've heard from a budget piece of gear. I do have one complaint though. Like I alluded to earlier, pitch is not modulatable. Either in the FM section, look at that, detune, fixed pitch, not modulatable, or in the sample section right there. Pitch semitone and detune, not modulatable. I don't really understand this at all because it's available as a macro control. For most of the sounds, pitch is absolutely something that changes the harder you hit something else in the real world, regardless if it's a drum or not. So I would love to see 1010 add pitch modulation in a firmware update. Now, this thing has gotten a lot of hate, but since this isn't an episode of Bad Gear, I won't go super deep into that. Uh, what I will go into and say, though, is that I think a lot of people have judged this really at a glance without diving into it. They simply see the really cheesy pink color uh, and the tiny size and think that it's just a toy. And to be fair, it's really nothing groundbreaking. I mean, just playing around on the pads at first, my first impression was, eh, yeah, it sounds good. I was just kind of dinking around here on these pads, if you can even call them that. And I, I wasn't like crazy impressed, but if you are a drummer looking for a drum synth that offers a ton of playability, sounds great, and still stays affordable, this is it. It blows my mind that 1010 did not market the playability of this thing more. In all of the videos I've watched on the Razzmatazz, which by the way is every single one on YouTube, there's not a lot there, I only found one person who actually plugged this into a drum pad or some kind of electronic kit. Actually, technically two people, but they were both people who worked on the Razzmatazz. <laughs> Hell, at first I almost wrote this thing off entirely because of the negative comments I'd seen about it. So maybe that can be a lesson to all of us to at least try to learn a little bit about a piece of gear before we judge it. Anyway, thanks for hearing me out. This might not be the drum machine for you, and that's okay, but I was just so excited to finally get my hands on a piece of gear that gave me the drum synth parameters I was after, with the ability to make them as playable as possible in a live setting, that I just had to make a video about it. I really, really dig the 1010 Razzmatazz. 
Just like I do hope you found this video informative or at least entertaining. If you did, be sure to leave a like on it. If not, you can always leave a dislike. That's okay, too. Doesn't hurt my feelings, just makes me try that much harder next time. Either way, be sure to hit that subscribe button, ring that notification bell. Thank you all so very much for being here. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye.